Hello, and welcome back to the third video of the series on my on my Marine Infantryman uh, TAPS kit. Um, in the previous videos, I've covered my first line gear, the gear that I keep inside my pockets uh, or on my person all the time. Uh, I've also covered all the modifications that I've made to this TAPS kit to get it to where it's at right now. Um, so if you haven't seen those videos, then please go ahead and watch those videos. You can find them on my channel. Um, but in this video, we're going to be talking about the equipment specifically that I carry in the chest rig. Before we talk about that, just to talk a little bit about philosophy of use of a chest rig or just infantry philosophy, um, how we get to this point. So I believe the past 20 years or so war on terror has kind of skewed a lot of young Marines and young soldiers that skewed their minds away from conventional warfare. Being that it's a war on terror, we're not really, in most cases, fighting a formal military with equipment and SOPs and standards and publications. We're fighting a militia. And a militia is gonna use what they have. They're gonna use pickup trucks. They're not gonna have aircraft. Um, maybe they do, but most likely not. And so it's been a, a fight where, um, where NATO forces have been able to dominate. Uh, air superiority, uh, fire superiority. Uh, we have logistics, we have ammo, we have water, we have food, we have FOB set up. Um, and it really shrunk down the kit that Marines were wearing. If you look at pictures of Gulf War early in, in the 90s, Marines are still wearing LBE, um, not a lot of plates, not a lot of armor flak at the time is what it would have been. Um, but as the war on terror progressed, kits got smaller and smaller until it gets down to the point where these uh, special forces guys are hitting raids and stuff and all they're wearing is their kit, plate carrier, belt, uh, assault pack maybe, and that's it, right? Because we had the security, we had the, the know that this helicopter is gonna resupply you, right? And a lot of young, 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 young Marines have that ingrained into them to no fault of their own, uh, just because that's what the Marine Corps has been doing. Now, conventional war. Conventional war, that is not the case. In conventional warfare, it is so easy for that seven ton to get ambushed, or that ship to get sunk, or that plane to get shot down, especially if we're fighting a pure threat. And what's on the truck, what's on the plane, what's on the ship, all of your resupply, your ammo, water, food, supplies, weapons. And what that does is it requires more of the average infantryman or the average Marine in general, to be more self-sustaining out of your ruck, out of your pockets, and out of your kit. It requires that of every Marine, of every unit, and every platoon, regardless of MOS. Where you can start is with your kit. So now that I've talked about that a little bit, uh, I'm gonna start showing you guys how I accomplish that. First things first, you'll see I have two canteens of water, two one quart canteens. We'll go ahead and put those in there. I carry these canteens inside of the issued canteen pouches and I carry a little bit more stuff. But for all the reasons that I previously mentioned, these canteens uh, are emergency water. If I have the ability to drink from a, from my ruck or drink from any other source of water, I'm going to do that before I drink the water that's on my kit. 
this water is for if I get separated, if I get lost, if um, things go not according to plan. Right? Hopefully this water and the rest of the equipment that I'm carrying um, will buy me enough time to get to another friendly unit, uh, to self-rescue myself, or to be rescued by another, uh, by another unit. Right. It would be a shame to escape the enemy, escape death, and then die of dehydration. Right. So within these pouches on the canteens, I carry a, a headlamp, red lens, white lens, I carry that up front so it's nice and easily accessible. Drops right in there. And then camouflage paint. Always make sure that this is fresh. Got plenty. That goes right in there. Now, onto the back side. On the back side is kind of where I keep my more survival oriented items. Uh, I kind of just put them in there and forget about them. So the first things that I carry on my left side here is two flat packed rolls of tape. Um, tape can be useful for hundreds of different things. It's a good thing to have from repairing a tarp or a wind layer, rain layer, um, to even doing things like demolitions with it. So if you ever need it, there's no substitute for tape. Also within this pocket, I carry a big lighter with a little bit of tape on it to keep the gas from getting depressed. And a whistle. A whistle can be used for lots of things. Uh, from your signal plan, you can coordinate this to shift or cease fires. Um, or it could just be used for your lost or missing read plan. Um, of course, all of this is if you work it into your own plan, right? Uh, so, but nevertheless, it's a good thing to carry. When I make my own plans, I always try to work this in. Uh, light, small, easy to carry, so it goes in. Next thing, uh, in the opposite side pocket, on my right side, I carry a, a uh, cravat. A cravat is just a large triangular piece of cloth that you can use as a, a shoulder splint or an arm splint. You can use it to pre-filter water uh, so you don't get all that dirt and stuff in there. Um, you can use it as a head covering. You could use it for makeshift bandages. You could use it for lots of different stuff. Inside the cravat, I carry a small signal mirror. Uh, again, emergency aircraft signaling, things like that, or just standard signal plan. Uh, there's also a couple safety pins inside here, so if you get a big tear in your uniform or something like that, you can pin that back up. So that goes inside here. And then also in the same pocket, I carry a bottle of the uh, portable aqua uh, you know, purification tablets. Um, I believe there's 35 inside this bottle. Uh, they are one liter sized, so to 35 liters of water that I can purify um, with my canteens here, of course. And then I have some uh, water purification bags as well that I'll show. And again, to, to remind, all of these are items that I put in and forget about. Within my ruck, I'm going to have my like field field craft kit that's gonna have water like it'll have the water purification tablets tape uh, other things in there 550 cord that I'm planning to use that like if I need to make something purify water I bring that with me with the specific intent of using it for that the stuff that's inside here is emergencies it's redundancies for emergencies so moving on, I guess we'll cover the uh, tourniquets and magazines here. Uh, so I have eight magazines. Um, most Marines get issued six. 
Soldiers get issued like seven, um, but if you can get more, you should know more the merrier. Um, so I have eight, I'll put these in. The first one that I have rides inside of my radio pouch as like the uh, first magazine that I'm gonna fill and put into my rifle uh, during pre-mission. Next one goes in, uh, this is my speed reload. Uh, just the insert retention on it um, and then my other three up front here I have with the insert as well as bunch of retention. And I talked about it in the modifications video but I like to have at least single retention, uh, preferably double retention on all of my magazines. Um, so you don't lose all your stuff, lose all your ammo. As with the survival equipment within my ruck, I would also prefer to be carrying at least a bandolier, so four or six mags of additional ammo already loaded, but if I don't have the extra mags, then just inside the boxes. You can load them whenever you have the opportunity to. Now, the tourniquets, uh, because the way the taps are shaped, these first and six mag pouches don't work very well uh, for magazines, so I put tourniquets inside them because they're a little bit smaller than mags and they pull out much easier. Now, to talk about the rest of the pouches that are on the front here. Uh, right here I have a, I have a London Bridge trading a, a double rifle mag pouch. Obviously its primary function is for magazines. I carry two magazines inside there. However, um, you'll notice that this pouch has a buckle. Uh, this pouch has a buckle because I sometimes use this for smoke grenades. Uh, being that a grenade is very valuable, most likely worked into a signal plan or just concealment. Um, something that I don't want to use, so I like to have double retention with the Velcro and the buckle on there. Uh, so if I have a smoke grenade, I'll just take that out. I'll take those magazines out, put the smoke grenade in, uh, and then these magazines can go inside of my rug. Uh, in addition, the taps, the radio pockets on, on the taps will also fit smoke grenades. Um, this one will, will most likely have a radio in it, but I also have a spot back here for an additional smoke grenade. Two smokes on me. Okay, moving on, uh, my multi-tool pouch. A multi-tool is one of those things that should probably be carried on your body. Uh, just because of how useful it is and how many, how how much that a multi tool can do for you, but because of how thick and heavy they are, I can't stand having it inside my pocket, so I put it on my chest ring. Uh, that's a that is a Leatherman OHT one hand tool. Not that I really care that that it's a one hand tool. Uh, it's just a good multi tool. I definitely uh, you need to get a quality one. Don't get a cheap one like a. Winchester multi-tool or something like that. Those, those are no good. Um, now, moving over here first. This is a Eagle Industries 100 round saw pouch uh, that I use for my NVGs. Inside I also have an Eagle Industries 100 round, or not 100 round, uh, NVG insert, a uh, padded insert with a stiffener in it too. Um, I've used this for PBS 14s and PBS 31s. Uh, it fits both. Uh, the 14s I normally put in with the arm still on the 14, and then the 31s you got to take everything off of them to put them in there. But it works. And then, of course, got the dummy cord. Uh, so I got one level of retention, and then Velcro for number two, and buckle for number three, because you know how important those things are. 
Uh, now moving on to the CCS pouch. So for a really long time, I used the assault pouch on the front for this pouch. And I actually might switch back to it, but I got the CCS pouch for a good deal. So I wanted to try it out, but it's just not quite as large and it doesn't quite fit those like larger maps and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm using it right now. So I'll talk about it. Um, the CCS pouch is good. I use it, as I said, for maps and other uh, items, cards, uh, CEOI, something like that. Um, so I'll put that map inside there. I also have pay speeds, just dummy corded to the inside for obviously using for navigation. Uh, but normally just for maps. Then on the front of the assault pouch, I also keep a Hanka 550 cord, um, super inval invaluable. Um, you can use it for lots of different things. So 550 cord on the front. And then within this pouch as well, be dummy corded, I have a small Sharpie and a additional red lens for map work or something like that. And then on the front, Velcro for name placard. Okay, now, that covers everything on the front of the taps. We'll move to the back. Take the harness off for this. Now, in the center pouch here, um, I keep an air panel and some other stuff. So, air panels. This is a cut version of an air panel, but I wanna talk about cut versions of the air panels because this is still a two foot by two foot air, air panel, which I think is uh, just about as small as you can cut it while still wanting to rely on this to signal to aircraft. Uh, I see lots of guys with cut versions of air panels that are like this big. And uh, that'll work fine if you're trying to use it for something internal to your squad or maybe like platoon. But if you're trying, it, like if you need to rely on this to signal the aircraft, which like I've been talking about in a conventional war, you might need to, uh, you need to have a larger air, air, air panel. So I keep that there. It serves as a little bit of padding for the chest rig. And also, you know, I have the air panel. These are the water bags that I was talking about. I have three of them. They're one liter in uh, volume. And uh, I can carry water in them, collect and purify. Uh, so they're good things to have in addition to the canteens. Some drip drop, I got two packets here, uh, help you rehydrate yourself or just prevent dehydration or if you just like them for the taste. But I try not to drink them, I try to save them for emergencies. Uh, it goes inside there. And then on the opposite side, I have a bag with some tinder and a flint wheel. Um, if you're cold and wet, having this might mean the difference between life and death. Because uh, if you're going in hypothermic, you're not going to be in any position to be collecting wood and tinder, things like that. Hopefully you're with your squad or fire team or something like that and they can help do it for you. But um, you yeah, know, might save your life. Another thing that might save your life is a space blanket. Uh, so this is a orange space blanket. Orange on one side, silver on the other, that has been uh, put inside a plastic bag and wrapped in tape. I just did that to help protect it because these things are pretty fragile. And I put that behind my uh, radio pouch as a little bit of padding. I've used space blankets in the field before. And if you've ever used them, you can attest to how well they work and they might just get you through. Batteries. So I got four double A's and four one, two, three batteries here inside a little battery case I got off of Amazon. Um, and that rides right inside this pocket here. With the batteries, just like the water, purif the, uh, water purification tablets and um, a lot of the stuff that's on the chest rig, uh, these are like my last, my last batteries. I don't pull from these batteries. Um, I, 
bring other batteries with me in my ruck that I use first. If I have to use these, then I'm um, it's my my last ones. Right? So got some insect repellent wipes. These are great. Um, super thin, small, lightweight. Uh, in addition to these, I carry inside my ruck a bottle of the spray like spritzer juice insect repellent, not the aerosol kind that makes a lot of noise, the one that just has the little squirt top on there. And I use that before I use these. But those are good if you're on patrol and you go through somewhere that's particularly disgusting, you want to put that on. Maybe you don't already have it on. Uh, you can put that on. Finally, the IFAC. Uh, so my IFAC is just a um, issued, all the stuff that you get issued inside your IFAC, inside a Ziploc bag, uh, for a couple reasons. One, to keep it more waterproof. Two, to keep it contained. Uh, and then it goes right inside here, where I could reach it, actually put it like that, where I could reach it front and center. And then on top of that, a third tourniquet. That closed up. So with that, that covers um, what I carry in my second line kit, uh, patrol kit. This is going to be dependent, or the decision to use a chest rig or use a plate carrier is, de is, is dependent on what you're doing, but again, to talk about the conventional war aspect, I believe a lot more uh, time in the future is going to be spent in chest rigs or the next iteration of load-bearing equipment, uh, mainly because plates are heavy, expensive, um, one-time use items, like once one of them has been compromised, you need more of them, and the logistical train is going to be under just as much attack as the ground combat element. Um, so you might not have plates. You might, uh, you might have plates originally, and then you are no longer able to use them or they're just straight up too heavy and you choose to forego plates so you can carry more ammo and water and food. So I believe in, in the near future, you're gonna start seeing a, a lot more ground, ground combat units get away from their plate carriers. But that being said, I still have my plate carrier. I, I could start a whole nother series of videos with the plate carrier and the equipment that I carry with that. Uh, so if you guys want to see that, then please go ahead and drop a comment. Uh, if there's any questions about this kit or any uh, suggestions that you guys have, uh, you guys can also go ahead and drop that down there. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.